think we're going to get started. So good afternoon or good, good evening. I think we have some folks in different time zones. Um, welcome to our 2022 Open Community Forum. My name is Joy Garrett. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the Community Contribution Coordinator. So I believe the first thing that we're going to do is take questions from community members. So if you would like to put those in the chat so that we can ask them to our board candidates. All right, so this is an open question for everyone. Um, what is the most important issue in your view that the Drupal Association faces today? What do you hope to bring to bear to assist with that issue? Would anybody like to start us off? And it's in the chat too, if anyone needs to look at it again. Uh, I'm happy to kick us off. I think that's like a phenomenal question, by the way. Um, I think the most important issue, at least for me, is really trying to understand how the Drupal Association could increase or possibly um, evolve their role in helping Drupal become more vibrant, whether that's uh, getting more people to adopt it, having uh, Drupal you know, invested in specific ways that might make it more attractive for contributors or people to adopt it. And uh, what I hope to bring to that is really just some of my experience uh, in both implementing, using, building products in Drupal, et cetera, that I think might be a helpful perspective. But also I, I really uh, wanna hear from the experience of all of the community members. Like I feel like being a conduit uh, to the community to hear what their thoughts are and how Drupal itself or the DA can evolve in helping uh, with the viability of Drupal is, is a very important responsibility for this role. And I feel like that has to happen uh, for anybody that's elected from the community in the seat. Uh, so that would be, I think, my main uh, important issue that I want to focus on uh, if I'm fortunate enough to be uh, elected. Happy to go next. I think the um, long term, the you know, the most important issue for the Drupal project is bringing in um, new and uh, new contributors, new users to the pro project. Um, I think the role of the Drupal Association in enabling that and helping sustain that, this is kind of a maybe a um, not the most fun issue, but it's a it's a uh, it's a fiscal challenge. It's a financial challenge. Like how does the Drupal Association remain um, solvent and successful over the long term? Uh, two years ago, we saw how COVID affected the Drupal Association, and um, you know almost uh, caused the Drupal Association to uh, no longer exist. Uh, so much of the Drupal Association's revenue is based on uh, events and DrupalCon North America specifically. So long term, how do we support the Drupal project? How do we remain? Uh, uh, um, how do we have the Drupal Association remain viable to do that job and help them? I think it's uh, the challenge there is to diversify the Drupal Association's revenue and make sure that we're spending that revenue in the right places to have the biggest impact uh, for the Drupal project. Okay, I'll go next. Yeah, from my view, I think the main challenge is about how to bring the new blood into Drupal. So the main challenge is the marketing strategy. Especially, I'm talking from my experience, I'm based in Africa. Most people, they don't know about Drupal and they don't know the career path. So they need to have a clear career path. If you want to get in Drupal, where do you start? And to know different sections about Drupal. Well, there are different parts. If you want to become a developer or you want to become a contributor, non developer. So, those things, people, they need to be educated. So, my target is like to introduce Drupal like in schools, in the high schools, so that that's how we can get in early adoptions. So, that's the main challenge. Every schools, people, they don't know much about Drupal. They only know it post or at workplaces. That's my point of view. 
Uh, I can uh, take it and I'll also introduce myself. Hello, everybody. Nikki Flores. I'm based on Anishinaabe lands outside of the Midwest. I am a developer formerly and currently am a technical project manager for the last uh, three years now. And I think my answer is similar to Asaya. So I uh, have been a member of the Drupal Association, but as a Drupaler, for these many years, I think making the connections between the people who are interacting with the Drupal project, like Mark has mentioned, and then converting that into kind of like the dues paying card carrying membership, something about the Drupal Association that might be helpful is what I uh, experienced with the certified Scrum Master training. So having that kind of designation, that license, that certificate, whatever it looks like, and then having that be concurrent with a educational track. So like Asaya, having the this is what you need to learn to be uh, like a Drupal or, or these are the types of tasks or learning how to do views and learning how to do content types. I think having something that makes more concrete for the rest of the world what it is to be a Drupaler and having the association be a uh, organization that can support that may be helpful in terms of things like continuing education units or having a vote and a voice on any of the initiatives that come up. So having a more of that give and take between what community people say and what the association is doing, I'd like to see those become pretty closely wrapped. And I hope to bring to bear to assist with that, um, just an organizational perspective, thinking about it as somebody who has not been to DrupalCon except this past year, thinking about as, as somebody who was self-taught on Drupal, thinking about it as somebody who didn't necessarily know the benefit of joining the association, um, that mindset, if there's so many thousands of people who are using Drupal, but maybe 2,100 or so Drupal members, how do we make that more accessible or more valued or more widespread in terms of association membership and also encouraging um, actions. So like if you're a part of the Drupal Association, we would like you to have this many volunteer hours or these are the committees you could join or these are the initiatives that we can ask folks to get involved with. So that sense of shared ownership over Drupal as a profession would be something that I would be interested in bringing. Yeah, I think I think these are all great answers. Uh, I think mine's gonna be in a similar vein. Uh, I think expansion of the community uh, is probably the most important issue here because every other problem that we've talked about uh, as everyone's mentioned comes with new members uh, expansion of uh, new blood into the community and that leads to new members which leads to new new, new money right um, and better engaging uh, the different personas uh, that are active in giving back in the community um, about things that they care about in order to increase the amount of fundraising that, that the association can get. And I think it's uh, it's a multi-pronged approach with education about what the DA does and how they support and why it's important for being a member of the community to also support the DA because without the DA, um, as Mark mentioned, uh, there can be a world that we don't really want to see happen within the Drupal community. Um, and uh, what I hope to bring to bear with that is uh, my, my experiences in the network coming up from a developer and uh, you know transforming into a leader um, all within the same technology and the power that this community has to enable talent, to enable careers and to open up possibilities for both uh, employees, as well as clients and businesses and, and how they can deliver amazing digital experiences with the platform uh, and continue pushing new ways uh, and case studies and, and things like that um, to talk about what the future of Drupal is and, and how we're going to continue evolving this amazing community that's brought us all friends and, uh, you know, great experiences and careers in our lives and, and sharing that with, with a wider audience. Um, so I think it's really going to drive uh, on expansion of that community um, and let that kind of uplift uh, the, the Drupal Association and, and the knowledge sharing that goes with that. Thank you all for sharing. Those are incredible answers. Our next question. Earlier this year, our most recently elected at-large board member resigned. 
in an act that was likely both a protest and a sign of burnout and having not made any substantial progress in advance his singular initiative, expanding the voting pool for DA elections. This came personally as a huge shock to me and a peek at perhaps this role isn't as meaningful or as much of an agent of change or community representation as it may seem, particularly in the face of a board filled with longtime players who have made opaque decisions in the past. How will you as a candidate drive meaningful change as both the new and short-term member alongside other board directors who may be more satisfied or invested in the status quo? And once again, it's in the chat if you need to to reference it? Uh, I, I'd like to take this. Um, so I didn't know about the at-large at large, uh, board candidate. I was recruited by someone here on the board and I didn't know that it was open to just any board member, mm -hmm. same thing. So I think a lot of this is education. And then the other part of that is not feeling like I was allowed to participate um, without that kind of gentle nudging. And so maybe part of it would be the ability to share stories and to share like kind of like how I got to Drupal, how other folks got to Drupal, encouraging the Drupal diversity. So I think I would say either expanding the types of people who um, like we recruit to become candidates for that pool, alternatively sharing stories of what it is to be a Drupaler. Um, like John, what you talked about, we're here for our professions, my livelihood, my family, like my future is all based on Drupal. And so part of this is one, showing that Drupal is a viable career option, but also two, encouraging people to, you know, it's not just a certain type of developer that is a Drupaler. Like you can be a Drupaler and be a organizer, or you can be a Drupaler and be a community contributor. So, um, or part of the Drupal Diversity Initiative, which my company supports. So I think as a candidate, my meaningful change would be encouraging more stories and sharing how people uh, came to Drupal and what they're doing with Drupal and expanding the pool of who is like invited to participate in the elections. Yeah, I think and I can go next. Yeah. Go ahead, Nikki. Do you want to no, pop just, up? It, in terms of status quo, I think status quo is always evolving. So I think it's good to have an election every year. I think it's good to have new, fresh voices. And I think it's good to have a fixed term so that you can make space and make way for new opinions, new new ideas. Yeah, I uh, I personally uh, am not aware of the situation, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I do understand with any business or organization, there's politics to play, right? Um, and, uh, you know, I wanna go in with a fresh mind and uh, go in with, with a positive attitude, being able to look at making an impact. And, um, you know, it, it's possible we're gonna, we're gonna face an uphill battle um, with longtime players that are stuck in their ways. Um, that happens with really any organization and uh, the ways to get around that is, is really managing uh, how you communicate with people and how you lay out the changes that you want to make and the value that they're going to bring to the overall community uh, and making sure that that's told in a way that everyone can understand and really has, has no choice but uh, to recognize uh, kind of the decisions that we want to push forward. And if we can't get consensus on the story that we want to tell and the value that it brings to the community, then uh, furthering the conversations uh, about why or where the discrepancies are uh, in order to come up with a, a solution uh, that that really helps the whole. Um, you know, I think uh, uh, really everyone on this call has a significant uh, connection to the community, uh, has uh, been here for you know a, a long time and uh, my hope is that we can uh, step in and make change no matter which one of us uh, gets this this board seat um, and that we'll stick with it to push the board to 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 make the changes that they need to um, and you know I, I I haven't seen this story be told uh, in the way that you mentioned it in this in this question uh, from other candidates so you know, my hope is that it's a it's a burnout thing. It's a one off. Things weren't moving as fast as 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 uh, they wanted. Um, but again, I'm not close enough to the situation to to understand. It's all speculation, uh, and really want to want to try to stay away from that. Um, so, um, 
hopefully that that kind of answers you your, your question on on how I, I tend to approach the the situation. Um, I think it's a really good question and and really fair to ask. I can uh, maybe go next. Oh, it looks like Mark came off mute. Would you like to go first, Mark? Sorry. Go ahead, Adam. Okay. I'll go after you. Okay, no problem. Um, and I'll look for the mute button next time. Uh, so, yeah, I um, I have some thoughts on this. I guess the first is I, I certainly don't, uh, like John, I don't know the specifics of kind of what happened uh, with, uh, with Pedro, uh, but I do remember his candidacy last time. I know he was very passionate about expanding the voting criteria. Uh, it kind of leads me to maybe two, two different responses. I think the one is we shouldn't really be speculating. There should be enough transparency in the governance of the board that you should be able to see what he proposed. You should see what the resolution of that was, why it was the case. There's definitely, I think, some opportunities to improve upon um, just the transparency and communication there. Uh, there was another question, I believe, about the, the board notes and the meeting uh, minutes as well. Might be a little bit related, right? There might be opportunities just to make uh, some of the day-to-day -day communication a little clearer about the board's intent and why they do certain things. Um, but also at the same time, I, I really don't feel like it's fair to assume uh, anything specific about, you know, um, his circumstances. I, I don't think that would be fair to him at all. Uh, so I certainly don't don't want to go down that path. But I would say the most important thing is is that we have to build trust back to the community. We may all have different issues that we're passionate about, and that's really up to the community to vote on about which issues they want to see, uh, you know, taken up and have that representation uh, on the board. However, uh, the governance is just as important. There needs to be, you know, updates on that and follow-ups, and people should be really clear about exactly what's going on and how that's happening in the board. And I think that's the piece, at least, uh, that can help to establish a little bit more trust uh, between the community and the board. Um, and I, I think that's a totally fair thing to call out. I'm really glad this question is being asked as someone who um, has attended the open board meetings regularly for years, tried to, you know, get involved on that level and uh, understand what was going on as far as uh, what the board was thinking as far as the direction of the Drupal Association and, and have some level of input uh, and voice in uh, those discussions. Uh, I think it's been I feel that it's been challenging to only have that access, you know, once a year, essentially, um, you know, twice a year uh, at best. Um, I wrote about this in my uh, in my post about uh, running for the Drupal Association board seat about the, how important I think the transparency is and about about that board meetings page on the DA site that uh, has you know dates only that are two years from two years ago. Um, so this is something that's very important to me. I think the transparency is important from a governance perspective, as has already been mentioned, but I also think it's really important just from, uh, you know, getting, uh, getting people involved perspective. This is how, um, we get more people invested and, uh, participating in the future of the Drupal Association. Uh, this is how we get uh, people in, excited about potentially running for, um, you know, a seat like this in the future, expanding the pool of candidates. And, um, you know, I think that the only way that you, um, you know, there was a, a part of the question about, um, uh, you know, driving meaningful change in, in light of this. And, and I think the only way that you do that, especially right now without more transparency is to be in the room. And so, um, you know, that is what is important to me. Uh, and, you know, it would be a priority priority for me to, you know, advocate for and hopefully implement greater transparency so that others can see what's going on, hopefully become excited by what's going on, weigh in on what's going on and, you know, um, and become a part of that future for the Drupal Association. Okay, thank you, I'll go for this one. 
yeah, the part for burning out, this one I think is a two way thing. As a, to become a Drupal member, if you are you need to join the board, you are joining from the seniors and you are a junior, you don't have much experience. So you need to have emotional intelligence and you'll be dealing with different people from different backgrounds also. It also causes you to be stressed. So I think the best thing is to learn from the previous candidates. It's best to communicate with them, how was it, how did they manage? And then the first time when you join the board is to learn from the seniors. So the best thing is transparency, communication, and then you listen how it works. And other thing which really helped me, I see it's a very demanding position, was when I read on the code and conduct of the Drupal Association and the requirements, it's really stressful from reading only. So you need to be prepared mentally, emotionally for the board. So the main thing which I can encourage is to be mentally prepared and emotionally. Because we'll be dealing with different people on the board. Sometimes if you contribute something, someone they might look as if they don't like it. Or sometimes people, they might act in a different way. So you need to be strong and then to have a soft skill, how to communicate, how to ask others. But the best way to overcome such kind of things is to learn from the previous board members. I think most of them, they are always published, they are open on social medias and communicate. How do they manage? What do they go through? And then it really helps you. If something comes to you, you are able to handle it. It's not something new. They tell you, no, maybe first three months, there'll be challenges like this, communication, meeting deadlines. How do you overcome such kind of things of meeting deadlines? What is involved exactly? So that's, I think that's the best approach for me to deal with such kind of burning out or to like, you don't want to end up with the situation you know, by resigning before your contract is over. So the best advice I can say is to be mentally and emotionally prepared for the position. It's quite a big position and it's a demanding post. Thank you. Let me unmute. So I believe that um, from David's question, we were also able to answer uh, Mark's question um, about accountability and transparency. Um, so I'm gonna move forward and let's scroll down. What are some new tactics that you would recommend the DA implement to increase meaningful, emphasis on meaningful contributions from Drupal service providers? Tangently, what changes, if any, would you like to see made in the contribution credit system? Uh, I think I can take that initially. Um, and I did look for Mark's mute button first. Uh, so I, I know that there is a very vibrant discussion going on right now about the contribution credit system. Um, I can say, and I'll just give firsthand what my experience is. I don't, I think it's just becoming a little too academic. Um, in my opinion, I would like to see uh, it not be used as like a criteria to evaluate service providers. I think it's too complicated of, you know, you can't make an algorithm that gets it right or, or perfect. And there's going to be uh, and I, I certainly believe that you can't disenfranchise, um, you know, credits that might come from non-technical means as well. And I think you get into major gray areas there that I think are very hard to, to sort out. Um, what I would actually like to see, quite frankly, is I would like to see service providers uh, step up their game, especially financially, instead of just using the software, uh, trying to advocate and push for not only their teams to be contributing meaningfully, they can do that in whatever way it speaks to their values and their intent, but also to, to look at them as commercial partners to help drive uh, better investment back into uh, the Drupal project or the DA itself uh, in this process. And I know there are some programs that do that, like, you know, you can get your logo on certain things from the DA and you could sponsor DrupalCon, you could have a booth, et cetera, et cetera. But I think there's maybe some more opportunities there to offer some programs that can help you know, kind of bridge that like, you know, maker and taker philosophy that's been blogged about a lot. But what I would say, though, is 
if I had my druthers right now, I would kind of get rid of the credit system. Um, but I don't, I think that might be a little bit too bold or a little bit ambitious. You still need ways of being able to recognize both individuals and commercial entities that are participating uh, in the community. Uh, so I, I don't want to look at it too, too boldly, uh, but I can definitely highlight my perspective, which is it seems that there is certainly room for improvement there. And I have been reading and paying attention to a lot of the community blogs around this right now. Uh, Theodore Bayadala, who used to work with John and I, uh, actually just wrote one uh, last week that was pretty fascinating, uh, kind of taking a fresh look at things. Uh, and I would open up, you know, any voice or any perspective and try to encourage anyone in the community to, to reflect on that and not, you know, just look at it from one specific perspective uh, or even look at it historically of what we've done. We can think bigger and do something uh, innovative here. Uh, so I think there's definitely opportunities and I would like to be a good facilitator in that process and definitely pay attention to what the community is doing and try to advocate for more and better. So. I love that um, I've, it, the discussions that are going on around this right now um, on many of those uh, issue threads and following along closely. Um, I think that we haven't, we'll never perfect it. There's always going to be another iteration where we can improve. Uh, I will say that I think that Drupal's credit system is pretty fantastic. Um, and there's a, a lot of open source communities that um, that look to Drupal and have used Drupal's credit system as an example uh, for something great that that they don't have. It's it's one of the um, you know features that has been built into Drupal.org that you know along, during the GitLab acceleration progress uh, initiative during the uh, that initiative it's been. A topic of conversation of well how do we make sure that we don't lose this because it's important you know even if we're moving more pieces to GitLab, and there are great solutions that are happening around that we are not going to lose that um but i think it um it does way more um uh, you know it brings way more value than harm uh and i think that there are always going to be people that game the system and we can improve that some of that i think to, to help with that but I love that, you know, um, I love all the improvements that have been brought to it around non code contributions. Uh, I love, um, you know, that we have the ability to, you know, like committers have the ability to to choose who's getting credit and who's not. And I trust in most cases, the committers are making good decisions about who's adding great value and who is not. And I also, you know, in these discussions, the one thing that I always try to keep in mind and try to get others to keep in mind, you know, when we talk, there's a lot of talk about low value contributions. Um, and I don't really like that framing. I think that there are, um, you know, there probably are examples that you, that anyone would consider low value, but I think what most people are talking about, uh, I would not call low value. I think that maybe they are, maybe it's, they're more novice type fixes, maybe they're more novice type issues and, and people have concerns about how they're being submitted and things like that. But, you know, we were all novices once and I think it's super important to, uh, even if there is a bit of gaming going on, I would be very hesitant to make any changes that would, um, that would dissuade any true, you know, novices, uh, you know, um, from making those their first contributions and getting their first credit you know, that's going to get them excited and, and keep them contributing. So um, I want to keep those folks in mind um, and make sure that we are prioritizing them and not, um, you know, making the experience worse for them just to get rid of what, you know, will always be there, which is a group, of, you know, a small group of people that are going to try to game our system or, you know, game the algorithm. Uh, we can get better at that, but uh, I'm, I would be very cautious about unintended consequences. I guess I can jump in. I, I don't um, have anything to share about any changes to the contribution credit system, but I do think meaningful contributions would mean um, increasing and upping. It seems like that's been the case so far. The level of sponsorship that uh, companies that are able to give to the Drupal Association. So I know at least for my agency, they have increased every year and prices have gone up every year. And I think financially, I mean, our company 
makes our living off of Drupal. And so I feel like since it's such a pillar, such a bedrock of our company, that could be something that is reflected in the level of sponsorship. So I don't think that there's a problem with requesting higher levels of financial contributions and also increasing the variety of ways that organizations, individuals, corporations can contribute. So I do know that the Discover Drupal was an emerging and new thing that my leadership at my team decided to support. And I think that's the type of thing where other uh, companies could also think about the either mentoring time, um, supporting employees with mentoring time, supporting with equipment or supporting with any kind of training, I think are great ways to get Drupal's new lifeblood and to have this, the, um, the association be at the forefront of recruiting more people into Drupal. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Mark and Adam and Nikki did a, a great job covering uh, a lot of a lot of my feelings on this. I think my my emphasis here is, um, you know, I, I think I agree with Mark. A lot of the uh, contributions here, people are coming from a good place. I think something we need to be really careful of is discrediting someone's contribution. Um, you know, we don't want to make this. Uh, for lack of a better word, I'll call it a boys club, right? Uh, it's not, it's not uh, inclusive. It's not, doesn't promote diversity and, and equality. And, uh, you know, uh, coming up from a, a junior developer role and trying to get in the community, I was intimidated by contributing early on. And, uh, you know, I, I know the majority of the community is welcome, welcoming and, and super friendly and, uh, you know, I, I always enjoy the interactions that I do have, uh, but making sure that we don't try to put this contribution up on a pedestal so that only senior talent that's been in Drupal for X number of years can can make an impact. Um, and what's meaningful to one group of people might not be meaningful to another, but doesn't mean that it's not meaningful contributions, right? And I think as long as we take a look at this holistically and maybe separating, maybe the question is meant to separate individual cont contributions from the actual service provider contribution uh, system, which uh, I think there's uh, probably areas of improvement that that can be made to the service provider side of things. And, um, you know, uh, some of my personal experience really, you know, starting up uh, a Drupal agency myself and, and starting self-funded with just me and, and building it into a company, uh, you know, the cost is a barrier of entry. And, and when you look at you know, competing with the bigs and uh, other people that have been in the space for five or 10 years, maybe there's programs that could be put into place or, or at least pitched to, to the association to promote small businesses and new uh, organizations getting in here that are maybe using the community or longtime members and, um, and maybe provide some additional initiatives to, for them to play uh, in, the, in this ball game. Uh, that can also help with our other other problem about getting more community sponsorship, supporting small businesses, and and really helping push that forward. Get get more funding by providing additional opportunities for businesses that qualify, and and keeping that in. Um, I haven't really uh, thought about this in in too much detail, so I don't want to just throw out ideas without actually doing some more research and uh, on the service provider side of things. Um, but I think it's an excellent question and. Um, I, I think everyone uh, here really, really answered it well. So I uh, really appreciate you asking that. I just want to add one thing. I think that um, the discussions that are going on right now and the proposals that people are putting forth are really innovative and really fascinating. And, um, you know, so I think that uh, while I am and, and oh, I am hesitant to, to make sure that there are no unintended consequences. I think there's, even if the, the credit, you know, the core, the credit system ends up staying the same, I think there's some great ideas in those discussions that could be used elsewhere around service providers and stuff like that. So uh, I'm really excited to see how it nets out. Great. Thank you all for your thoughtful answers. Um, we are running along time. So that's going to be our last question from um, the community. But now we're going to transition into some of the prepared questions that um, Adam, Mark and John, you were able to answer earlier. Um, so we're going to begin with um, 
I know that Nikki, you were able to introduce yourself, uh, but we want to make sure that um, we're providing uh, visual and auditory opportunities for everyone. So although we have our blog post, which I'm really grateful that you um, that you sent in those responses, if you wouldn't mind, can you share again your name and your pronouns and maybe like a, sh a short bio for your involvement in Drupal, your professional background and community interest? Yeah, certainly. Thanks, everybody. So again, my name is Nikki Flores. I am Monica Deer on Drupal.org. I am, go by the pronouns she, her. And again, I'm based in the Midwest and Lansing, which is Michigan's capital city. In terms of my professional background, I am a former developer and now have been working in the technical project manager role as a certified scrum master at an agency for the last three years. And so it's been a switch from being in the code to looking at a higher level, dealing with stakeholders, timelines, deliverables, communication, problem solving, and assigning resources. In terms of my community involvement, I have been involved with the Drupal Diversity and Inclusion in this Initiative, having spoken at last year's inaugural DDI campus keynote, as well as supporting different initiatives such as the nonprofit industry summit at DrupalCon, this is my first DrupalCon in Portland this past year, as well as organizing as part of the community working group. So I have been able to, through my work, uh, have time dedicated directly to Drupal and the Drupal community. And so I've been utilizing that time in that way, as well as giving some talks. Um, what was the other question? Sorry, I missed it, Joy. It was professional. Uh, I think you, no, you hit it all. <laughs> so yep, professional background, yeah. community interest, and anything else you wanted to share? Oh, one of my biggest uh, ways that I got involved in Drupal and using, you know, spinning up your own hosting and just learning how to use Drupal was because I want women and uh, minority people who are underrepresented in tech to have mechanisms to share their voice, spread their product, spread their idea, you know, build community around their idea. And so uh, it's big for me to continue to educate people on how to use Drupal, how to use free tools to spin up Drupal instances and how to think through content types, views, permissions, all of that, um, in order to make those very powerful Drupal tools available to a wider variety of people. So yeah, we can solve our problems for our own communities when we bring our own knowledge and share that with each other. Thanks. Thank you, Nikki. Asaya, we're just introducing ourselves. So if you would, if you would mind um, telling us your name, your pronouns, and then maybe a short bio that um, about your involvement in Drupal, your professional. Oh no, I think that our oh here you are up there. You just changed the spotlight. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you can introduce yourself with your name, your pronouns, and then tell us a little bit about yourself, your involvement in Drupal, your maybe a little bit about your professional background and your community interest. Asai, are you still with us? We may be having some technical difficulties on that end. Well, to make sure that we are honoring the time, Nikki, I'm just gonna jump into a few of the questions that we were able to ask earlier. Awesome. So the first one um, is, what is your approach to managing executive level leaders? And I'm gonna put this in the chat. Yeah, absolutely. So this has been a, a evolving discussion at my own workplace as well. And a lot of it has to do with planning and identifying goals for each of the different executive leaders in terms of, for example, um, having guide points, having additional training, and then having a plan to achieve whatever goals folks have and having that documented in a way that it's easy to see quarter over quarter, year over year, so much progression. So for example, at my own organization, there's been a heavy focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion, including just cultural competence and understanding kind of the situation here in the United States, because bulk of our members are in the United States. And so each person has been tasked with going through a uh, company provided diversity, equity, inclusion training from our, our training provider. So I would say that would be one big aspect just because with Black Lives Matter and the events of 2020, we've just realized that there's such a huge um, 
chasm, disconnect potentially between people who in past historical situations have held all the power and people who are coming into that power. So I think part of it would be uh, one learning about different cultures, understanding historical situations and then understanding where there might be gaps in our current kind of executive functioning. Second is developing a plan for each person. If that is like learning how to update the website to post the minutes, like that could be a basic thing or having um, maybe some, back to the question earlier in the thread about what does accountability and transparency look like in the board position? I would say for sure for me, having a goal of how many people are Drupal Association members, as well as how many people feel comfortable with the associations, you know, um, those questions about how likely are you to support the Drupal Association's lead or how comfortable or how uh, satisfied are you with the Drupal Association's mission um, and implementation of the vision, having pre and post surveys with that, I think that would be a good way to start measuring or putting a number on overall satisfaction between the association. Yeah, so that would be part of uh, how I would approach that, having a plan, having a training, specified training, and then having some sort of numerical judgment factor that we could have as a goal. Awesome. Thank you, Nikki. And you kind of touched on um, one of our next questions a little bit. Um, and I've seen this as a thread throughout some of your answers, which I'm really appreciative of, but how will you embed principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion into your board seat if you're elected? And I just wanted yeah. to base if you wanted to share some more about that. Oh, sure. And I just want to make sure Asai, if he's available to talk about that. So again, I mean, I feel like that's very much built into whatever thread I have. And I think simply by existing as a triple minority, as a woman, as an immigrant, as a Filipina, as somebody who didn't speak English as my first language, I think even having a seat on the board is, is a great step, at least for me personally, being in the room and then having that ability to um, discuss and share that information with uh, the community. So like, for example, one thing that I didn't know and I didn't want to rock about was, is there a, a open contact for where people can raise even anonymously issues with the board and have a way for that to be reflected back so that people, one, know that they can give a comment, suggestion, feedback, or anonymous, anonymized feedback, and then two, to know that that's been um, referenced or heard or documented somewhere so that there's this open sense of discussion and not just kind of like what has been talked about before, opaqueness or having it behind closed doors. So I think about opening, sunshine, that kind of thing is important. Um, in terms of additional DEI, it would be about understanding that like I appreciate the time zones, um, appreciating the fact that there's pronoun usage, appreciating the fact that we can build uh, thoughtfully a place where anybody who does Drupal can feel comfortable. And I think that that is best embodied by initiatives like the Best Covered Drupal, where people who may not have thought of themselves as being Drupalers, people who may not even know about the technology, um, can be introduced to it and then to have an equivalent professionalization, like if there's a way to get a license or certificate or some sort of designation, then that elevates the profession and elevates the progression and then elevates the ability for people to feel like they can contribute. So that can be as a mentor, as a trainer, or just as somebody supporting through blog posts or stories. So um, one part of it is encouraging people to share, because I know for me, it's taken quite a long time for me to feel comfortable sharing. And then to making sure that the voices that are not yet in the room can have a voice or a seat or a open conduit into that room, as well as reflecting that back. Thank you, Nikki. What is your approach to nonprofit fundraising and philanthropy? Yeah, absolutely. So my uh, experience with this has been through the being the nonprofit web developer for Ashoka Changemakers. It's the, um, an institute based in Washington, D.C., as well as being the Drupal developer for Green America and supporting them through their DA launch. So the lessons I've learned is that you want ongoing contributors on a monthly basis. So I would use as my uh, approach this idea of sustainers becoming a sustaining member five dollars a month I know we always talk about a cup of coffee a month like if you can do a cup of coffee a month and then also highlighting the fact that these are all the benefits that you receive as being a part of that um, 
association membership. So I would say highlighting the idea that you can become a member, have a voice, have a vote, have ownership in the association for a small amount per month. And then also the idea that here's all the benefits that come with your badge, like we have on the Drupal.org directory, having the ability to vote, having the ability to join or be encouraged to join any of the initiatives that are going on. Um, but I would definitely focus on increasing the pool and decreasing the amount that it takes to become involved with the association. I know that there's a pay as you go right now, which I think is great. And I think I would encourage that. Awesome. And our last question is, what is your approach to building healthy team culture? Oof. Yeah, that's a tough one. So as a remote worker at a completely 100% distributed organization, it is all about both having a healthy communication asynchronous opportunity, as well as having kind of focused time to discuss certain issues. So I would say let's embrace Drupal Slack, having kind of community hours, having um, opportunities for people to participate, even if they're introverts, even if they're extroverts, like having lots of um, more social or cultural or educational events, as well as having actual the initiatives that people are working on to have maybe much more open and transparent notes for that. So for example, if I, as a new person, wanted to get involved in something like community working group, which I was recruited to work on, to have those notes and those, um, like the overview and the past history be a lot more visible. Right now, I feel, or at least in my experience, a lot of stuff is behind kind of gatekeeping or kind of firewall basically like you have to just know somebody in order to know what the discussions are in the room and I think part of this would be tied to the accountability transparency just making a lot more things open kind of sunshiny having a lot more of the minutes visible having any of the committees visible and open requests for um, actions that people can take on behalf of committee and initiatives I think that would be one way to encourage it and then also um, just to focus on understanding one's own strengths and weaknesses and how they would approach a team. Like everybody participates in a team in a different function. So not necessarily um, leaning towards people who are most vocal or the most outspoken or the most like in charge, but making sure that everybody in the room has a uh, time or an opportunity to contribute to the agenda or contribute to notes or contribute. So it's not just stratified, but that it rotates. So I think that's something that's helpful having rotating leadership, having rotating note keeping, having um, everybody participate in an equal fashion kind of Girl Scout style. Hmm. Awesome. Oh, oh, Thank and you, one more, and sorry, one more calling out conflict. Um, so part of healthy hmm. team function is to have conflict and to be able to speak to it. And so um, this really disturbs me even reading some of these blog posts about folks who feel like they're silenced or not able to share. So I guess establishing and continuing to build a sense of psychological safety where you won't be punished for bringing something up, you won't be um, disenfranchised for pointing out something. I think that idea of healthy, healthy conflict is, is something that I aspire to in my term of lacking. Thank you. And thank you for taking the time to share your perspective and your passions and your insight. And um, this will be this recording will be available for other people to be able to to look to watch um, later today. But I just wanted to take the time to thank you for joining us um, and I have a few reminders before we close out as we are hitting our time. Um, one, I know that Asaya will wasn't able to join us so for a part of the the question so just I want to remind everyone that um, you can check out his blog post to learn a little bit more about him so I would um, highly uh, recommend that you guys check that out along with other candidates blog post and just some important upcoming dates in order to vote you have to have um, an active membership at least 24 hours before voting begins so that falls on 0 hundred UTC um, on September 20th and our voting begins on September 21st, and it'll go through the through October 19th and close um, at 2359 UTC. After voting closes, the board will ratify and they'll take um, a little over a week. So from October 20th to October 31st, and then we're going to announce our new 
a new board member on November 1st. So once again, thank you for joining us. Nikki, do you have any, any closing thoughts before we uh, close this out? Oh, certainly. I would just encourage everyone to make sure your Drupal Association membership is up to date. You can find that on the association website. And um, each of us, it's up to each of us to play our small part. Um, however small it is, we can definitely be a part of moving and advancing the whole movement forward. So I welcome the support of anyone uh, who feels that any of the current candidates represents their interests. I encourage you to vote. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.